Only 799 more to go. Ideally, the weight I added will compress the paper and squeeze out any air that might be trapped in there. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to repeat this entire process a few times to get the slab thick enough. Here is the design that I came up with for this guitar. A uh, little bit of an unusual shape, but it's gonna be a little bit of an unusual guitar. And I think it'll look really good when I get the sides beveled out and the different layers of paper showing. Just gave myself a nice little cut on my hand here. Um, not from the bandsaw, but from the block of paper and epoxy. Uh, I tried to not wear gloves when working with power tools. You can see here, uh, well, I don't know if the camera's focusing, but there's a lot of little sharp edges uh, that the epoxy formed from the mold. So you really gotta watch out when handling this stuff. And the reason I don't wear gloves when working with power tools is that if a glove were to get caught in the blade or the sander or, or whatever's rotating, uh, it could pull your hand deeper into the blade in this instance, um, turning something potentially minor into something a lot worse. I am, however, going to wear gloves for the rest of this cut, um, just being cautious of where my hands are at. All right, here is the first mistake of the build. Uh, if you can see, this edge right here is slightly squiggly compared to this one. This not one straight, that's good. This one, not so much. This little bearing on the template bit came loose and rode above the template, which caused me to cut into the template. Here you can see kind of where I cut into the template. Um, so that kind of sucks, but it's all right. I think I've got another template lying around. And uh, I've got to like, I'm going to take a break or something. Uh, I just concluded my personal worst routing job. Uh, this one, I just had the template slip as I was routing. Uh, usually, I'll clamp the templates down, but on this one, I just uh, used double-sided tape. So I'm never gonna do that again. I mean, it, it's all right. I, I'm gonna go ahead and repair these routes eventually. Um, but even as they are now, I think the pickup rings will cover up the blunders. I still need to route the neck pocket actually, um, but I, I think I'll save that for another time. All right, so when I envision this guitar in my head, uh, it's curvy. It's got a lot of angles, a lot of bevels and stuff on it. Right now I'm just gonna get the belt sander and start shaving away the sides. All right, so just routed out an eighth of an inch lip around the control cavity. Usually I would go in uh, and route out the entire cavity to give it a cleaner look, but I don't really care on this one. Um, it's gonna get covered up with the cover anyways. So I'm gonna leave it like this. So the way I'm gonna fix this route is by putting some blue tape over the cavity, which will act as a little barrier or dam for the epoxy resin that I'm gonna pour in here. And I'm just gonna take this resin and pour it in until it fills in that little gap down there. Now all I need to do is go back with the router and template and reroute that corner. body shape is coming along. 
Uh, just have to tidy everything up now. Since I've got the neck pocket routed, uh, I can use the spindle sander to shave away this edge and get that all cleaned up. Um, I also have to move, out, move over to this side and spindle out this edge here. I'm about happy with where the body's at now, uh, but the finish isn't perfectly smooth. Like along the layers here, there's a few edges also here on the top uh, where these two pieces of paper meet. There's a small gap in between them. So I'm gonna give it a coat of epoxy resin to fill in all of those nooks and crannies before I eventually finish it up with a clear coat. So I've gotten some questions in the past about the truss rods I'm using and how I'm setting them up. Uh, and to this point, in all of my necks, I've used these Stumac uh, hot rod truss rods, which are double action truss rods, and they're super simple to set up compared to a more conventional truss rod. Uh, just a 7 16 inch slot uh, route in the neck blank, and then place this guy in. The rod's covered, but it's still good to make sure you don't get any glue in the slot when gluing up the fingerboard. Uh, but that's really it really straightforward and all of my necks so far have pretty good range and adjustability So no complaints here That's sort of my homemade fence for the bandsaw. Uh, this saw is not the best at resawing, but got the job done here. You can see it's not perfect. It's off by maybe a tenth of an inch, but it should be good enough. I can send out the rest. In matching the color of the guitar body, I am going to dye this headstock red and I'll probably sand it back and reapply a few times. Locating the bridge is fairly straightforward. Uh, just mark your scale length here so you know where to place the bridge. Then take a scrap string and feed it through the bridge and hold it on the other side on the nut. Uh, and then just move it until the first and sixth string are in the correct position on the fingerboard. That's pretty much it. Just don't screw up. I screwed up. Uh, but not because I located the bridge in the wrong position. It's just because these screws that I use, um, I, I screwed them in to hold down the bridge just as a test fit. And then as I was screwing them out, both of them broke off um, kind of in the middle of the shaft. Uh, so I got to figure out what to do here with these. All right, here's the fix. Uh, I got some stronger screws and I had to mount the bridge about an eighth of an inch closer to the nut, which exposes the old screw hole. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll just cover it up with some red Sharpie or something because I wasn't able to remove either of the broken screws. So just had to totally reposition the bridge. Last bit of sanding on the body and then it should be ready for clear coat.
I mean, not to toot my own horn or anything, but this has got to be the best looking one that I've built yet. Um, it's definitely not perfect. It's got, I still have a, a mishap here where I screwed up routing and I tried kind of blending it in with some red Sharpie. Um, you can still notice it a bit and then a little scar right here from the uh, screw that got stuck I had to drill it out with a Dremel. Um, so it's not perfect and I, I know some of you guys kind of get tired of my self or, or critical evaluations at the end of builds. And it's not that I'm trying to downplay the work I did, it's just more so that I'm trying to give an accurate representation of the finished build. So that's basically it. Uh, another thing I want to kind of mention is kind of my mindset, a little peek into my brain on when I'm picking materials to choose uh, to build a guitar out of. I like to pick materials that kind of disguise the epoxy. So for like color pencils, for example, or the paper, like when you look at this guitar, that's what you see. I mean, you're, you're looking at paper. You don't necessarily see the epoxy. Um, as opposed to something like my Jawbreaker guitar, where it's, that's basically just a, a chunk of epoxy with jawbreakers in it. And that one was cool, um, maybe more of a gimmick guitar than anything. But, you know, the, these guitars, like the color pencil ones and this paper one, are kind of more my style. Um, let's see here. I'm pretty sure I've got one of these two humbuckers mounted backwards. Um, I'm just basing that off pictures I found online. But to me, it makes sense the way they are because both. Uh, both of the, the pickup wires are coming out of the corner pockets here, so I'm not totally sure on that, but it doesn't matter to me regardless, it sounds fine. Uh, I've got a three-way selector switch here, and then on the back, um, I made this control cavity cover out of, I don't know, I stacked probably 20 pieces of cardstock together. Um, it's like an eighth of an inch thick. Um, it's not perfect. Those control cavity covers are pretty difficult to make to fit perfectly. Other than that, that's about it. I mean, I'm pretty ecstatic with how it came out. I'll probably spend a good amount of time over the next few weeks just uh, just staring at it. Uh, but for now, let's, uh, let's hear what it sounds like. So let's do a, do a quick little demo. As always, if you guys would like to keep up to date with the work I'm doing, um, give me a follow on Instagram at Burl's Art. I also post other videos of me jamming out on the guitars I build there. All right, let's get a weight on this real quick. Looks like we're just around 10 pounds. It's not bad. I think I found my niche, guys. Just making the uh, heaviest guitars possible. <laughs> 